Story 1 The Black SUV I still shudder when I think about that night, about how a simple swipe on Tinder could lead to such a horrifying encounter. Before this, I was just your average college guy, Chris, immersed in the hustle of classes, parties, and yeah, trying to find a date on the internet. But after that night, nothing felt normal anymore. It all started on a drizzly Friday evening. I was lounging in my dorm, flipping through Tinder profiles while chomping on cold pizza, and then I stumbled upon a profile that immediately grabbed my attention. Her name was Claire. She had sparkling blue eyes and an infectious smile, and her bio read, Love is an adventure. Dare to embark on it? I was intrigued, and with a cocky smile, I swiped right. The match notification popped up almost immediately and we hit it off right from the start. Our conversation flowed effortlessly. Music, movies, food, dreams, you name it. She was intelligent, had a great sense of humor, and we shared a lot in common. Or so I thought. She asked if we could meet the same night which was a bit unusual for the first date, but I was caught up in the momentum. We decided to meet at the coffee shop downtown. I threw on my favorite jacket, styled up my hair, and hurried off into the night, excitement tingling in my veins. I arrived at the coffee shop, but it was oddly closed, which was strange because they usually are open late on Fridays. I texted Claire about it, but before she could reply, a black SUV pulled up right in front of me. The tinted windows rolled down and there was Claire, except she looked slightly different than her pictures, more mature. Maybe she was wearing a dark coat and the blue eyes seemed intense in the dim light. Oh, I'm sorry Chris, she said. My friend just called me with an emergency and I was about to cancel, but since you're here, why don't you join me? We can go grab a cup of coffee on the way. I stupidly agreed. I mean, she was right there, and I felt bad for her friend. Plus, I didn't want to ruin our date, so I climbed into the SUV. As we drove, Claire was quiet. Her earlier charm seemed faded, and her intense eyes never left the road. I tried to strike up a conversation, but her answers were short and distracted. An unsettling silence filled the car. The city lights gave way to a desolate highway, then to a creepy tree-lined road. That's when my heart started pounding. We were driving into what seemed like a deserted part of the town, far away from the hustle and bustle of the city, far away from people. I asked Claire, where were we going? But she only smiled, her lips curled up in a sinister way that didn't reach her eyes. Then in a desperate act, I found a half empty water bottle in the cup holder, hurled it at her momentarily stunning her and causing the SUV to swerve. In the chaos, I unlocked the door and shoved it open and jumped out, rolling into the cold, hard dirt. I staggered to my feet, wincing at the pain radiating from my shoulder, and started running, not knowing where I was going, but only driven by the instinct to escape. Behind me, I heard her screaming my name, but I didn't dare look back. I just ran until my lungs felt like they were bursting, and my legs felt like jelly. After what felt like an eternity, I stumbled upon a gas station, burst in frantically explaining my situation to the clerk who promptly called the cops. And when they arrived, they found the abandoned SUV, but no sign of Claire. It turned out that Claire was actually part of a notorious crime ring that preyed upon unsuspecting people. The emergency she had spoken about actually had been a code between her and her accomplice. I shivered realizing I was likely to be their next victim, but I escaped barely. The police never found her. I stopped using dating apps after that. Every time I think about swiping right, I remember those intense blue eyes, the creepy deserted road, and the cold sinister laugh that still haunts my dreams. I learned a lesson that night, a lesson etched in fear and a close call with a grim fate. Be careful who you meet online. You never know who's hiding behind those sparkling eyes and enchanting bios. Story 2 Magic Mistake Submitted by Lily So, my name is Lily. I'm an accountant by day and a lover of books and wine by night. And just like any other professional woman, 
I sometimes succumb to the lure of Tinder for the occasional chance at love. I've been single for a while and I figured, why not? But I'd soon realize that some adventures are best left untouched. It started with a swipe right on the profile named Jack. His bio was quirky, just a magician looking for his greatest trick yet. His picture showcased a handsome man with a bright smile and mischievous eyes. We matched and the magic, so to speak, began. Jack was charming, funny, and we shared a lot of the same interests. Our conversations flowered like a well-written novel and I was quickly smitten. After about a week of chatting, Jack suggested we meet in person. I agreed and we decided on a cozy little Italian place downtown for our first date. The evening of the date, I dolled up, put on my favorite dress and set off with a hopeful heart. Jack was already there when I arrived. He stood up as I approached the table, his smile as enchanting as his pictures. We ordered wine and the conversation was easy and relaxed. I was genuinely having a good time. After we finished our dinner, Jack offered to show me some magic tricks. I laughed, thinking it was just a cute gimmick to lighten the mood. But things took a chilling turn. He performed a few harmless tricks first. I was laughing and clapping, absolutely enjoying the show. But then he pulled out an old ornate pocket watch from his jacket. He told me it was an ancient hypnotist's watch and asked me if I'd like to see it work. Thinking it was all part of his playful act, I agreed. He started swinging the watch back and forth. His voice turned into a low rhythmic hum, instructing me to focus on the watch. I started feeling drowsy, my eyelids heavy, but I attributed that to the wine and the dim lighting. Suddenly, he snapped his fingers, pulling me out of a trance-like state. He chuckled, saying the trick was just to make me relax, but something felt off. I looked around, and the bustling restaurant seemed unusually quiet. Everyone was frozen. The waiters, the guests, everyone. Horror gripped me. I tried to stand, to shout, but my body felt numb. It was as if I was stuck in my chair, my voice a mere whisper. Jack just sat across from me, grinning. His smile was no longer charming, but chilling malevolent. What's happening? I managed to croak out. He laughed, a sound that echoed ominously through the still room. Just a little trick, Lily, he said. It's time for you to leave now, but don't worry. You won't remember anything. And with that, he snapped his fingers again. Suddenly, I was back in my apartment. The sun was streaming through the window, my date night dress replaced by my usual PJs. My memories of a previous night felt like a fading memory, but I knew it wasn't a dream. I quickly checked my Tinder, but Jack's profile was gone. Our entire conversation vanished. I was shaken, my mind filled with fear and confusion. I reported the incident to the police, but without any evidence, they couldn't do much. Even now, years later, the memory haunts me. I can't help but wonder what happened that night. How many others fell prey to Jack's sinister trick? The experience left me with a constant dread, a lesson in terror that some things and some people aren't always as they seem. Some people are masters of illusion, concealing their true nature behind charming smiles and playful tricks. Story 3 The Unseen Stalker Submitted by Sophie Hi there, Sophie by day and project manager and prominent tech firm by night. A lover of true crime podcasts and documentaries. Well, this isn't about the time when I solved an interesting murder case, but about a chilling encounter on Tinder that I felt like it was taken right out of one of my beloved podcasts. His name was Max, an attractive guy, successful lawyer according to his bio. His smile seemed kind, his words clever. After a couple of messages back and forth, I felt this immediate chemistry. So when he proposed a date at a quiet coffee shop in town, I agreed. 
When I walked in that evening, I spotted Max. He looked just like his picture. Our date was great, filled with laughter, anecdotes, and intellectual conversation. By the end of it, I couldn't shake off a tiny sense of unease. I brushed it off as date nerves and drove home. Over the next few days, Max and I texted continuously. He was sweet, untentative, and always seemed to know what to say. But that's when I started noticing strange things. It began with little coincidences. Max would text me about a song I was listening to or a movie I was watching, right at that moment. Once he even mentioned he loved the smell of vanilla scented candles, the same one I just lit in my apartment. It felt like he was always watching me. He knew exactly what I was doing. My heart pounded every time I got a message from him, the anticipation morphing into fear. I tried asking him about it, but he laughed it off as a lucky guesses. Then one day, I came home from work to find my apartment door slightly ajar. My heart throbbed in my chest as I pushed it open, only to find everything exactly as I left it. No signs of forced entry, no missing belongings. But there was one thing off. A familiar vanilla scented candle, the same one I had at home, was burning on the coffee table. I called the police immediately, but with no signs of burglary, they couldn't do much. Max was my prime suspect. I confronted him over text, but he pleaded ignorance, brushing it off as creepy coincidence. I didn't buy it. I blocked him on Tinder, but the damage was already done. The sense of being watched lingered for days, then weeks. Every creak of the floor, every whisper of the wind sent chills down my spine. I lived in consistent fear, dreading that Max was somewhere out there, observing my every move. I eventually moved apartments and changed my number. The fear subsided, but the memory of Max and those haunting messages still creep into my thoughts sometimes. I never knew what happened to Max. His profile vanished off Tinder, and I never heard from him again. But his presence left a mark, a chilling reminder of potential dangers lurking behind charming smiles and clever words on dating apps.